Welcome, everybody. Um, it's such a great day in the city, and we're grabbing a last summer uh, day here with the sun out. It's going to be a warm day, and can't be happier to be able to open this uh, facility up. Um, you know, we, we got a few loose ends we got to do. We're going to do, be doing the parking lot across the street over. Winthrop Street, Gay Street, and um, Witherby Street are all going to be done in the spring. Let's see who takes credit for that. No. <laughs> but, but anyway, it's a, it's a great project. And um, we went through a lot of people overseeing this over the years. Um, it started with the planning with John Galoni, who I believe is with us today. And, and sh sh where's John? There he is, always in the back. Thanks for coming. Then it went to Sean Dival, and then it went to Rob Quinn, and then it went to Ted Scott, and Ted Scott's our, uh, our uh, finisher on the mound. Uh, he actually finished this up. Uh, Dan Jackson was part of this whole thing, and the person that's been here every day since the beginning, uh, Tom Gadzunas, I'm sure Tom's somewhere here. Is he behind me? No? Uh, <laughs> he's, one of, he's one of our Marlboro residents and been the clerk of the work since we started this project. Also did the library for us, I mean the uh, school for us. So thank you very much. Uh, with that, I want to turn it over to some of uh, our state colleagues and I uh, ask Representative Danielle Gregoire if she wants to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. I just want everybody to know there is a stool here and I'm not standing on it because I believe that's a sign of weakness. So I never use the step stool, even though I probably should. I am so excited to be here this morning. I just held the program up a little because it poked my head inside because I wanted to see how beautiful this place is and I can't wait to spend so much time here. We have so many people to thank. Um, in addition to the state funding that we were able to secure uh, through a series of state budgets, somewhere in the neighborhood of $100,000 and what the uh, library trustees and the library commission have put into this project. We've had so many people from the community step up to be a part of this history of the city that we all love so much. And it's just a great day to celebrate everyone being here, this beautiful day we've been given. And I can't wait to see what happens in this building in all the years to come. So thank you for allowing me to be here this morning and thank you for allowing me to be a small part of it. And since that block is only on half of the podium, I assumed it was because I have one leg longer than the other that they wanted me to balance <laughs> off. But um, I'd also like to bring up Representative uh, Common Gentile. He's joining us today and obviously was part of the uh, state process and getting some funding. So, Kamai. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Vincent. And uh, it's great to be with you all today. You know, I remember it was probably nine, nine years ago, eight, eight or nine years ago that, uh, that uh, Rep. Gregoire and I got together with uh, Don Verico and some others who were doing some private fundraising, raised almost two million dollars for the library. And I remember uh, several years ago that, uh, that the Wayland, the people in Wayland got a $10 million grant for their library and they turned, they turned it down. I was so glad to keep it in my district, keep that ten million dollars to go to this building. <laughs> and you know, it, it's always a team effort, and there, there's so many people work to get to make this a reality. And thank you all. Ge generations to come will enjoy this facility. It will complement their education and 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 their, enrich their lives. Uh, thank you so much and. Let's enjoy this beautiful library. Thank you, Representative. Um, as a representative said, uh, we applied for the state for some of their grant for the libraries, and we were so excited. Um, well, we weren't that excited because it was a year early. And in my planning, I wasn't planning on doing it, but. Uh, Margaret Cardillo, and I'm sure Margaret's here somewhere. Margaret, she was, she's our longtime director that was here through most of the project before 
she handed the torch over to Sarah, but Margaret came down and talked to me and said, the good news is we got the grant. I said, well, that's fantastic. The bad news is we have to take it now. And, and like I said, um, we had planned some long-term projects, some larger projects, and we're phasing them in over a number of years. And this one fit in, but a little bit early, but we made it work. So uh, from, the, from the library, uh, Board of Library Commissioners, I want to bring up um, uh, Vicki Biancalo. Uh, so Am I close? So close. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So close, so close. <laughs> Biancolo. <laughs> really did great job, great job. Um, and I'm standing on the stool. I'm using the tools at my disposal. So, <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone. I'm truly honored and delighted to be here today to, for this joyous event celebrating this beautiful new public library. Um, my name is Vicki Biancolo. I'm the vice chair of the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. And on behalf of the board, I'd like to say congratulations, Marlboro. I feel like a rock star. Marlboro! Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> um, so I have some thanks to give. I want to thank the library director, Sarah Belisle, for inviting me to speak today. Former director, Margaret Cardillo, who fought so hard and dealt with so much to get this project done. Assistant director, Morgan Manzello, who's been with the project through construction. Um, the legislators and local officials for their support of the project, the board of trustees, the Library Foundation for their work in getting this project done, the library staff who do the hard work of getting, doing the library work every day, yes, and most importantly, patrons, all of you who use and value your public library. Um, and I'd like to thank, actually, and introduce a couple of members of the audience. Um, June Thomasong, who's the communications special, specialist, the MBLC is here, and if you could, Join me in thanking our um, uh, library building specialists, one of whom is retiring. This is her last event after building dozens of libraries across the Commonwealth. We have, please thank me, a round of applause for Lauren Stara and Andrea Bono Bunker. Thank you. Um, okay, as I said, I'm here to congratulate you, Marlboro, and to quote my mom. Um, I hope you're proud of yourselves. And, uh, <laughs> but unlike my mom, I mean it sincerely. We are here to cut the ribbon, well, no, not actually, but in, metaphorically, on a gorgeous new public library. So, and as the representative of the Board of Library Commissioners today, I'd like to say that we're very, very happy to be here. And we were very happy to help fund the library with a construction grant of over $10 million. Um, Yes, it's <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> yes, but you did the work. Um, you took the original Carnegie Building and its 1960s edition and ended up with this, right? A fully handicapped accessible building that'll address community needs and is ready to meet changes that we know are coming, right? It's the only thing that's, that's always true. Change is coming. You have meeting spaces, updated technology, space for teens and children, expert help from trained professionals, and so much more. I believe that communities can be understood by walking into their public library. We fund our priorities, and they are, they are a reflection of our values, and you chose to fund this public space. Libraries provide something in, unavailable in too many parts of the United States, right? A safe place to be, a warm and cool place to be, a place that serves as one of the few where you aren't asked to partake in capitalism simply to be there. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Libraries and the availability of excellent reading material, reliable information, expert help, and connectivity are economic, educational, and social equity issues. Whether you, I, I know you realize this because you did it. By opening this library, Marlboro, you have taken a stand against bias and hate. You have taken a stand against censorship and book bans and against the suppression of First Amendment rights. With this library, you have taken a step away from the ugliness that seems to be swamping our country. Libraries are a place to practice civil discourse. You've taken a step toward democracy, toward an informed citizenry. 
toward a community that supports marginalized and underserved people, toward the village, the community that it takes to cherish and grow the next generation. You're taking hold of our fundamental freedoms that are guaranteed by our Constitution. You believe in your people, and this library is a place for everyone. So well done, Marlborough. You built the dream. I know, I got that from your website. Well done. <laughs> like, this is a place for everyone. So as I will finish with Andrew Carnegie himself, who said many years ago, there is not such a cradle of democracy upon the earth as a free public library. A library outranks any other one thing a community, a community can do to benefit its people. It is a never failing spring in the desert. So congratulations, proud of yourselves. Okay. Thank you. And thank you for the $10 million, that was helpful. I'd like to bring up uh, Senator Jamie Eldridge again, uh, was instrumental in helping us receive that grant. Jamie? Thank you, Mayor Bridget, and my apologies for being a few minutes late. Um, I just want to congratulate everyone who's involved. I know this has been really a multi-decade effort by uh, citizens of Marlboro, uh, by the city council, uh, by the mayors, and really want to give uh, a special kudos to Mayor Vision for, for pushing this through. Uh, the legislative delegation, as you know, my colleagues already talked about, Representative Gregoire and Representative Gentile, in addition to advocating for the $10 million grant from the Mass Board of Library Commissioners, uh, secured some additional funding in uh, different budgets uh, to help uh, with the Marlboro Library Foundation. Um, I want to particularly thank the Marlboro Li Library Foundation. Um, they were very much uh, always doing outreach uh, about different ways to secure funding, and I really appreciate uh, their vision as well. Um, as the previous speaker just said, I, I really see libraries not just as a place for people to read books and, and learn and explore and, and spend time with their families, but it really is a place for people to come together in a particular community and exchange of ideas and strengthen the community in that city or town. So wonderful to be here and of course here in Massachusetts is the home of where the library, the public library, the free library f first concept began. So this is a special moment here in Marlboro. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, Senator. And, and like I said, um, so Margaret Cardillo, a former director that, that um, was here for many, many years, has been pushing a new library since almost the time she began. And we've had several conversations with it. And as soon as I started as mayor 12 years ago, she was on me again. <laughs> but this time, more in the driver's seat where I could get it done. Um, so we thought it was important to move forward. But she thought it was important, um, since she was close to retirement, to pass the torch to the future generation, the future leader of the library. So she, she left the beginning of the year. But she was really instrumental in getting this moving and getting it going. But she wanted to pass the torch to someone that was going to be the future of the library and someone that could make it grow from where it was to this beautiful building. Um, I know Sarah has big shoes to fill, and she's been doing a fantastic job since she's been here. And I want to introduce Sarah, our library director. Hello. I'm also using this one. <laughs> uh, I want to thank everyone for being here today. It's great to see so many people here to support the opening of our new beautiful library. Uh, my name is Sarah Belisle, and I'm the library director of the Marlboro Public Library. I want to start by thanking everyone who has been involved over the many years to see this come to fruition. Our project managers, Tom Gatsunas and John Levica, and all the others from CHA, the architects from LLB who designed this beautiful building, the contractors from MOCC who made it happen, the team from DPW, especially Rob Quinn, the amazing facilities commissioner, and the IT department for their tireless work to install all the new technology infrastructure you'll see here today. So it's a pleasure working with you over the last nine months to see this project to a close. I'd also like to thank the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners for their grant that made this possible and support along the way, the Marlboro Public Library Foundation and the donors who, made, who helped make this dream possible, the Library Board of Trustees for their advocacy work, and of course, Mayor Vigent, City Council, and the residents for their support and understanding how important the library is to the community. 
Of course, none of this would be, have been possible without all the hard work from my predecessor, Margaret Cardello. I'm so glad she's here today to share the joy with you all. Lastly, I'd like to thank all the library staff for their incredible amount of work that they've done over the last few weeks to get ready for this day. I've never worked with such a dedicated staff whose love of the community shines through. Libraries today are more than a warehouse of books. We are community centers, protectors of intellectual freedom, builders of literacy in all vol of all forms, fighters against censorship, and most importantly, promoters of equity within the community. In this library, you'll forge new relationships, discover new ideas, and learn something new. But don't worry, you'll still be able to borrow and read the hottest new book you heard about on TikTok. <laughs> I'd like to think of libraries as a living thing. The building is the bones, the library staff is the brain, and the community is the heart. Without the community, without all of you, we wouldn't be here. Your love of the library and what we do and represent is so incredibly important. The library is like a living thing in another way, too. We change, we evolve to meet the needs of our community. This library behind me will not be static. We will grow and change with our community to meet your needs. The opportunities this building gives us are endless, and I promise that the dedicated library staff and I will open up those opportunities to you all. Thank you. So we, uh, we approved um, a lot of money to build the library, and then the state came through um, with their $10 million, but we are still a, few, a couple of million dollars short. Um, so the foundation uh, got together and really pushed, and they've done a fantastic job in raising money to fill in the last pieces of this project. And uh, I can't be happier with the results that they've had, uh, and, and they are continuing to raise money. So if you see those signs out, out in front of people's homes that say, you know, about the $1,000, a thousand donors, uh, if you haven't yet, please consider giving to that. Um, they can spread it out over a few years for you. It's just something to fill in these last pieces that aren't quite funded yet. Uh, we really need to do that. So with that, I'll let Bill come up and give you a sales pitch from the foundation. <laughs> Make that check payable to the Marlboro Public Library Foundation. Thank you. <laughs> Seven years ago, I had the privilege of joining the foundation. And after working with a fine group of individuals, I really come to understand the importance of the library, of the community. And the fact of the matter is, as much as I get a lot of the spotlight, it really is a fantastic group of individuals that begin with all of you, the community, the businesses, and move on through that foundation to help make this possible. The first time I walked through the library giving a tour with Sarah, I was thinking about the time I took my family to Disney World, that first trip, that excitement and enthusiasm. And I think you know what I mean when you walk through that library, what we now have, because it is fantastic. I cannot put it in words. But I know a lot of effort went into that. We had a lot of great support from individuals like Senator Jamie Eldridge, and State Representative Daniel Gregoire, who helped us meet our goals. And of course, I was fortunate to see the visions of Margaret Cardello and continue that with Sarah, Sarah Belize to see that vision come to life. So I want to give all of them a round of applause for me. And I certainly want to take this moment to introduce the Marlboro Public Library Foundation committee members who really helped to make this all possible with your support. So if you're here and you hear your name, just give a wave. Nina Bloomquist, Bill, Bill Bruin, Janice Merck, Elaine McDonald, Peter Montague, Marilyn Perry, Kathy Russo, Dan Barrico, Deborah Russ, and Ginger Ryan. 
So thank you to them. Thank you to all of you. And I cannot wait till you get to see the library. It's going to be a fantastic trip. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. And um, uh, the cleanup battle for today, um, we, we've had a lot of groups involved since the beginning, uh, whether it was my administration or the building pe people or the city council approving the money. Um, we put together a building committee right away, and I know a lot of them are here today. Um, we had the foundation raising money, uh, and the trustees have done a tremendous job in this library uh, and, and making making sure that we're moving in the right direction. They're the ones that uh, oversee Sarah and her, and her operation up here. Um, so it, it was an effort by a lot of people over a lot of years. So I really want to take a moment and thank you all for your efforts. And with that, introduce uh, Fred Hass, uh, one of the trustees for the Old Marlboro Library. Good morning. It's nice to see all of you here. Uh, as the mayor said, I'm Fred Haas, and I uh, chair the board of trustees for the library currently, um, and I have the honor of being the last speaker. Um, so I learned the value of public libraries at an early age. When I began elementary school, my parents bought the house that I would grow up in just outside of Chicago, and it just so happened to be in an unincorporated neighborhood, which meant that their taxes were a little bit lower but we did not get access to all the free town services that many of my classmates did, like a free public library. There was a charge for the library card at that time that was a little out of reach for my family. Um, but the summer I finished second grade, the library ran a free open summer reading program for any public school student in town. And I finally got my library card that was all my own and that summer, I read everything that I could possibly get my hands on in hope of securing every possible reward that was offered. <laughs> I even won a contest for a poster I made about the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which hung on display in the children's library for weeks. My mother was so proud. <clears throat> but after that summer, I had to resort to getting my friends to check things out for me. But that experience really made me see what a wonderful place a public library can be. And it also made me understand the importance of a public good. So in an era that celebrates subscription services and privileges private purchases, our city of Marlboro has made a powerful public statement in a public good in this brand new library you see behind me. And it isn't, I mean, isn't it really just beautiful? <clears throat> so nearly a hundred years after the construction of the Carnegie building out in front, this hallowed public ground has been reinvigorated once again. And I hope it will serve as an anchor for a, rena a renaissance for the entire downtown corridor of our city. So I have to, it would be remiss of me not to thank uh, many people again. So to Mayor Arthur Vigian, the city council, our state legislators, my fellow trustees, the foundation, all of the donors, the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, and everyone else involved with this project, thank you again for making this beautiful public building possible. And yet, libraries aren't just buildings. It's the programs and it's the people and I have always sort of felt great about libraries and library people. So as a trustee, I have had the privilege of working with the previous director, Margaret Cardello, who has been recognized multiple times, who helped lead us to this point, as well as the distinct honor of helping select our current director, Sarah Belial, who has taken charge in the last year and led us to this ribbon cutting. They are two remarkable professionals with kindness and insight and the necessary requirements to make anyone welcome and show them what kind of programs and public services are available to everybody. So, for our public spaces are indeed for everyone and all 
are welcome at the Marlboro Public Library. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to come down here and we're going to do a ribbon cutting. I want to invite the counselors up to do the ribbon cutting. Um, also, we're going to take one with the foundation members that are here and also the building committee that were here. Um, please don't step on my trees. We just put them in. So, and as soon as we do the ribbon cutting, we're going to be open for business. Two, one.